Well hello, good morning. It's just gone 10am on Friday the 25th of May. I'm heading off for the weekend. I'm doing back to back 300km DIY Aldaxes. I'm just passing through the village of Cumnor, about 4 miles before I drop down to Oxford. I've just dived into the church porch so I'm going to have a quick sandwich here. I left Bath at 5am. I've been riding in the rain since about 6am. Uh, it's going off a little bit now. I'm hoping it's going to brighten up during the day, but if it doesn't, I don't mind too much. So tonight I'm heading up to a travel lodge at Long Sutton. That's quite close to Kings Lynn. So Long Sutton is a market town. It's actually on the Lincolnshire Fens. And then tomorrow I'm going to ride another 300 back from the travel lodge, back to my house in Bath. I'm not riding the two 300s as a 600km DIY. I'll explain why when I get to the travel lodge. So my route today is pretty much just a straight line at quite an acute angle, about 30 degrees, from Bath up to Long Sutton Travel Lodge. So the route's going shortly past to Oxford, and then this afternoon I'll be skirting around the edge of Milton Keynes, Newport Pagnell, always makes me think of the M1. Then through Peterborough later this afternoon, early evening, then the final leg of the fence to the travel lodge. The weather has been really hot and dry for the last couple of weeks, and then yesterday it started raining quite heavily. I went to bed last night thinking, well, it looks like I'm going to have to ride in the rain, because I'd booked the travel lodge a week and a half ago. My brain did that sort of defragmenting sort of thing, I woke up with a completely different sort of look on it. I thought, no, this is a preparation ride for my 1200km DIY in a few weeks time and I may have to ride some of that, maybe all of it, in the rain so this is going to be a good practice and it's actually not that, it's not cold rain, it's just been drizzly misty rain, there's actually quite a warmth in the air as well. So I'm now passing through Oxford, I love weaving my way through here. So it's now about 12.30 and I remember riding this stretch before. It's funny how sometimes you forget about things like this and then literally with about a quarter of a mile to go, ping, it suddenly reappeared and I knew this was coming. It's an old railway which has been converted into some sort of road but it looks like it's for industry only. You might see down there, there's, lo there's lorries coming. So a bit about this road, I'm trying to get ready for my 1200 in a few weeks time. The bike is fully loaded up this weekend, as it will be when I go. So although I'm staying in a travel lodge tonight, I've got my sleep system, I've got all the clothes I would be taking on the 1200, oil, all the tools, all the extras. It really is a dress rehearsal for the kit. Gosh, quite a few lorries. Another one shot by. So it's about 2 p.m. now. I stopped at Wilmslow about one o'clock and just went into a garage and got um, a little hot savoury snack and a Costa coffee, sat outside, had some warm food. I'm mostly dry now, my feet still feel a little bit damp. Hopefully I'll be able to turn the heater on in the travel lodge tonight. So I'm now going to pass through this arch through the grounds of this stately home. I remember this so well from last time. It's really nice this next section. They've even got their own church in the grounds. So you emerge from that country estate in the village of Philgrave. There's the school, and now check this shelter out there. It's a clock tower. Get a load of that. So I'm in deepest Bedfordshire now. One of the things I love about coming over this side of the country is I recognise a lot of the big town names like Bedford and Aylesbury, but a lot of the village names, they're, they're completely new to me. I mean, this is great, isn't it? Newton Blossomville.
travel lodge, bang on 10 p.m., 191 miles. We got to Long Sutton itself about 20 to 10. The chip shop I planned on using wasn't open, so I went into a Chinese. That took about 15 minutes. Then there's about another mile from the Chinese to here, so I'm gonna go in, check in, have a bath, then have my Chinese meal. It's 10:40 now. Just had a really nice hot bath, and I've just eaten my Chinese meal. Just finishing off a can of Fanta. Feel quite nice and chilled out now. So this afternoon, it got warm enough to roll my arm warmers down to my wrists, but it never really got warm enough today to take them off. And I also wore my windproof vest all day on top of my cycling top. My feet felt quite damp most of the day, although they were never really cold. So riding through Peterborough wasn't great to be honest. Last time I rode this I was heading up to Spalding. I remember Peterborough being really nice. I cut along the riverbank and then took a really nice route out. This time it just went round all these industrial states and it's, um, there was some heavy industry as well. And the moment I left you hit the fence and there was this really quite thick mist already. It, it almost felt wintry to be honest. I'd actually seen the, the mist in the distance, in fact I thought I may be heading in some more rain. So I'm not complaining, it was dry, but it, and it, it was very atmospheric. And riding across the fens, I guess it's the last 25, 26 miles, heading due north into a wind which was starting to pick up a little bit, so at times it was quite tough, but enjoyable. So the wind is supposed to pick up tomorrow, but it should be beneficial, it should be blowing me most of the way home, I hope. So I said earlier in the film I would explain when I got to Travel Lodge why I'm doing two three hundreds and not a six hundred. I thought all through the winter about doing a six hundred leading up to my twelve hundred as a sort of qualifier. I'm very aware that I wanted to start doing back to back days, which is why I've been doing the four hundreds. And I just couldn't really bring myself to ride this as a six hundred. I did consider riding my Brian Chapman. 700 DIY in Wales and I looked at the travel lodge there I used last year but it was £68 and I figured I'd get no more than three hours sleep so that works out about £22-£23 an hour it just didn't seem value for money and I picked this one up for £46 now, I plan to have a really good sleep here not rush it so if I get eight hours sleep that's like £5 an hour so Quite a difference really. I want to have a really good line, go and get some breakfast and then set off at 10 a.m. just as an experiment. It may or it may not work and then I'm going to do a first. I'm going to actually sleep on a 300 on my way back and the reason I want to do that is well firstly I'm carrying all my sleep system because I've, I've packed my bag exactly as it will be on the 1200 so it's a dress rehearsal, it's a final test. So starting off at 10 a.m. I don't really want to be getting home at 2 or 3 in the morning disturbing my wife. So I'm going to try and use up nearly all of the time allowance which is 21 hours 35 minutes. So that gives me till 7.35 on Sunday morning. So yeah I'm going to try and sleep for the first time ever on a 300 kilometre DIY Audax. It may work, it may not. Who knows, by, by having the 8 hours sleep and setting off much later I may not feel tired. But I will need to kill some time at some point because, as I said, I, did, I do not want to get home and disturb my wife in the middle of the night. So I'm going to try and be asleep for 11.30, hopefully sleep right till 7.30. That still gives me two and a half hours before I need to leave.